Hi guys, Mrs. Morseman here, and today in this lesson we're going to continue talking about exponential functions, but specifically where do we see exponential functions in our everyday life. Last lesson we talked about transformations of exponential functions. We talked about what happens to the graph when we shift the function left, right, up, down, or reflect, or stretch, or shrink. Another thing we talked about is when does the exponential function grow and when does it decay or decrease. So we're going to review a couple of those things. We're going to talk more about growing exponential functions and decaying exponential functions, but again in the context of what you see in the everyday world situation. So let's look at this first thing on our notes. It says Kendrick puts $200 in a savings account that earns 4% interest each year. How much interest will Kendrick earn in the first year? So if we look down at this table, okay, it's given us a formula. Now I want to make sure that we understand where this formula is coming from. So I think for a second, where is this 200 coming from? Hopefully you'll say that's the $200 that Kendrick has put in his savings account. Now look at this 1.04. Actually, let me do that in a little bit different color. Where do you think that comes from? Well, that comes from this right here, 4% interest. But when we're earning 4% interest, it's not going to be times 4. Remember, when we're taking a percent and turning it into a decimal, we take the number that has a decimal right after it, and we move it to the left two places. So that would mean it would be 0 0.04. Now, the reason why it is 1.04 is because we want to take what we have and add 4% to it. Later, we're going to talk about what happens when you want to subtract or take away a certain percent of something. But if we want to increase or add 4% each year, which that's what this means, earns. That means add or increase. If it said something like pay or is a fine, something like that, that would be subtracting. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the calculator. So if you guys don't have calculators with you, pause the video, find yourself a calculator because we want to make sure and use that. So I'm going to put 200 parentheses 1.04 and I get $208. That means how much interest will Kendrick earn in the first year? He started with 200 and at the end of the first year he'll have $208 in the account. That means he earned eight dollars interest. That's how that works. And what is the total amount of money that Kendrick will have at the end of the first year? Well, that's the two hundred and eight dollars. And then in the second year, Kendrick will, er, will receive 4% interest on the total, of total amount of money that we found in problem two. So how much interest will that be? Well, again, we'll look at the table, but again, so if I want to look at the next year, now we have $208, and then we're going to multiply by 1.04 again. So there's the 4%. He's earning interest, so that's why we add it to 1, and we get $216.32. Okay, 
So what we're actually seeing here is an example of an exponential function because exponential functions, what you do to get your new answer each time is multiply by the same thing each time. So what is that thing that we're multiplying by? It's this right here, the 1.04. So each year, you take what he has in his account and you multiply by 1.04 and you get your new amount. So if we look at this table, what's in the brackets here, that's what we had in year one, 200 times 1.04. And if we're going to do it again, then we're going to multiply by 1.04 again. Well, if I'm multi multiplying by 1.04 twice, What's a different way to write something that you multiply times itself two times? Like if I said two times two. Another way I could write that is two squared. Well, look over here. 1.04 squared. So if we put 200 parentheses 1.04 squared in our calculators, we're going to get out this 216.32, the answer that we got up there. So we could keep going. In year three, this would be 200 times 1.04 to the third power. So if I put that in, I get 224.97. So what do you think the exponential form would be if I'm going to look at year four? Hmm. I hope what you notice is that the exponent corresponds to something here. Now the reason why we don't see a 1 there is because it's assumed that it's there. So if I want your 4, this would be 200 times 1.04 to the 4th. And if I want your 5, this would be 200 times 1.04 to the 5th. So let's do both of those. 200 times 1.04 to the 4th, we get 233.97, and then 200 times 1.04 to the 5th, we get 243.33. So what I want us to take away from this is to understand if we are increasing by 4%, so we get 4% interest, it is 1.04. That is what we're multiplying by each time. I also want you to understand that the year corresponds to that exponent. So in number five, where they want us to describe any patterns, we've already talked about that. So we could say the year is the exponent. That's really probably the best and the most important pattern here of what's going on. So if I want to write just a general equation for the amount of money he's going to have in that savings account after T years, all that would be different is instead of actually putting in a number for the year, we would put in T. So that's why this is an exponential function because the variable is in the exponent. And we could say this is equal to the amount in his account. Okay? So that's just a little taste of an example of where we could see exponential functions. If you actually, well, we'll just go to the next page. So 
this paragraph up here is basically just talking about how whenever you put money into a bank, the reason why you get money, like you get interest, you receive interest, is because we're loaning money to the bank and they're actually using that money in the stock market. So they're making relatively safe um, bets on the stock market to invest your money and then you get that money back. That's how banks make their money is by using our money to invest. So that's kind of crazy to think, but you know, we really do need banks because it's a place to keep our money secure for the most part. And if you guys know about, you know, several decades ago we had the Great Depression and that's when the banks they didn't they couldn't pay back people their money because they had lost it in the stock market. But we're thankfully we're in better shape now. So this right here, this is the formula that we use if we want to find how much money is in an account or the amount that we have after a certain period of time. So P stands for the principal. That is a word that you will see like if you get a loan on a house or on a car or anything like that. That's the uh, original amount. And then R stands for your interest rate. And this is very important. We've already talked about this in the first page. Written as a decimal. Very important. So for example, if we had 14% interest, that would be written as 0.14 or 14 hundredths as an example. Okay, so let's do one. This might seem a little overwhelming right now, but it's really not that bad once you know the formula. And by the way, when it gets to test time, you'll have this formula written on the board or something, so you don't have to have that memorized. So example one, suppose Pam invests $500 at 7% interest compounded annually find the value of her investment 10 years later. So $500, that is P, our principal. 7% interest, that is our rate, or R. And then 10 years later, that's T, our time. So we have to be careful though, before we use this, we need to turn 7% into a decimal. Should we move that over twice? That would make it 0 0.07. So when we put this into our formula, we're going to have 500 times 1 plus 0 0.07 or 7 hundredths to the tenth power. Now if I wanted to simplify what's in those parentheses, this would just be 1.07 to the tenth power. So let's plug that into our calculators if you haven't yet. So 500 parentheses 1.07 to the tenth power and I get 983.58. Now I rounded that 8 and I rounded it there because it makes sense this is money so $983.58. Let's look at another one. Suppose John invests $1,000 at 5.3% interest compounded annually. Find the value of his investment 30 years later. So again, 1,000 is P, our principal. 5.3% interest is R. That was bad R. And then 30 years later would be T. So again, our formula, since you can't, you can see it on your papers. 
but just so that we can practice it. I'll written it down again. So 1,000 goes in for P. 5.3% turns into 0 0.053 as a decimal. So 1 plus 53, in this case it would be 53 thousandths to the 30th power. Or I could add 1 plus 0 0.053 That might be a little bit better to put into the calculator. And we get $4,708.16. Okay. Now, I'm not going to switch over to a calculator, but I'm going to talk about what you're going to see. Because this next part says, let's look at a graph of John's investment on your calculator. So what you would see if you put this into a calculator, is you would see something like this. Because what happens when you're getting interest and when you have an exponential function is since you're multiplying by something each time, the gap or the jump between point to point gets bigger and bigger as you go along the function. So like the space or the distance from point to point gets bigger. So if that happens, so if you are increasing, we call this an exponential growth function because it is growing. So let's talk about maybe a different type of situation. So when you put money into the bank, hopefully you're earning money on that. Well, sometimes there are situations where you lose money. So for example, when you buy a car, the second you drive that car off the lot, it loses some of its value. So we would say, in that case, we would say that a car depreciates over time. So if we're talking about a situation where a value is decreasing, we call that exponential decay. Or it would be an example of an exponential decay function. So the only difference between the formula that we just used on the previous page and what I'm going to show you now is in this case you're taking away so instead of plus r, it's going to be minus r. The other variables are the same. T still stands for principal, r is still your rate, but in this case, we're going to have situations where it's decreasing, so we're going to subtract by that rate. We still have to remember to write the rate as a decimal when we use it in the formula. So let's look at an example. The population of a town is decreasing. So we need to be looking for those kinds of key words there. Decreasing at a rate of 1% per year. In 2000, there were 1,300 people. Write an exponential decay function to model the situation then find the population in 2008. So first we're going to write a function. That basically means we're going to have t in our equation. So our principal is where things start. Our principal 
is going to be this 1,300 people. Now, we're not talking about money anymore. We're talking about people. But what we do is so very similar. So we're starting with 1,300 people. And the population is decreasing. So I'm going to do 1 minus the rate. And if the rate is 1%, remember we turn, we move the decimal place over twice. That would turn into 0 0.01. And they want me to write a general function first, so I'm going to leave it T. Now what we want to do is we want to simplify what's in the parentheses there. And if you put that into your calculators, 1 minus 0 0.01 is 0.99. So this here would be your function, although to really make it perfect, I would need to put an A in front of it. Oops, not one. 0.99. And so that's part of our answer. So I'm going to box that. But I'm not all the way finished because it says then find the population in 2008. So am I going to put in 2008 in for T? If you're working too quickly, you might be tempted to do that, but it's not 2008. When does it start? It starts in the year 2000. So how many years have gone by between 2000 and 2008? Eight years have gone by. So I'm not going to plug in 2008. I'm going to plug in 8. So then if we do that in our calculators, we get... 1,199.56. Now, earlier it made sense for us to put two numbers after the decimal place. But what are we talking about here? We're talking about people. So does it make sense to have a part of a person? No. So this 0.56, we're going to round that to the nearest whole number, which would make our answer... 1200 because that would round the 9 up which would round that 9 up which would then finally round the 1 to 2 so 1200 people okay let's do another one value of a car is $18,000 and is depreciating at a rate of 12% per year. Find the value of the car after 10 years. So here, we don't have to do what we did in the previous example where we wrote a function. They just want the answer. So value of a car is $18,000. That's my principal. It says it's depreciating, it's another word for decreasing, at a rate of 12% per year. So 12% in decimal form would be 0.12. So I need to do 1 minus 0.12. And I'm finding the value of the car after 10 years. So I can plug this into my calculator the way it says, or I can simplify the 1 minus 0.12, this part right here, to 0.88. So let's see what we get. I get 5,013.02. So here, does it make sense to have 0 0.02? In this case, it does, because we're talking about money. We're talking about the value of the car. So after 10 years, it's only worth about 
So it went from 18,000 to 5,000. That's how cars work. Unless it's an antique car that might increase in value, most cars decrease in value. So if you were to look at, again, we're not going to put this into our calculator right now, but if we did, it would look something like this. Okay, because it's probably never going to happen to where the car is going to be worth zero dollars. It's always going to be worth something, maybe not much. And then the car is never going to be worth a negative amount, but it's going to start off, and maybe I might try and do that a little bit better. It's going to start off worth more, and then its value will decrease. So when that happens, when you see the word decrease or depreciate, that would be called an exponential decay function. Decay means something very similar to decrease or depreciate. Now all of these cases that we've talked about in these couple pages were if it's calculated once a year. There's going to be times where things are calculated more than once in a year. So this table here is to help you understand that vocabulary when they say something is calculated or compounded. Compounded. Biannually, quarterly, monthly, daily. So it could tell you how often interest is calculated. So the word annually just means one time per year. So biannually, like bicycle means two wheels. Biannually would mean two times per year. Quarterly means four times per year. Monthly, how many months are in a year? 12 times, or 12 months in a year. Daily, how many days are there in a year? 365, unless it's a leap year, it'd be 366. And hourly, that would be a lot. 8,760 hours in a year. So, This formula that you're going to see here, it looks quite complicated, I'm sure. It might be a little overwhelming. But what's new is this K. And we see it twice. We see it in the bottom of a fraction, and we see it up in the exponent. That K represents the number of times per year the interest is compounded. So if K was 1, meaning it was compounded annually, doing R divided by 1, to the 1 times T, it's the same thing as just R and T. Because dividing by 1 doesn't change the value of something. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of something. But if it's compounded more than once a year, then we need to do this. We need to use this formula. So let me show you an example. Suppose Robert invests $500 at 9% annual interest. Compounded monthly. So how many months are in a year again? 12. And we're going to find the value of his investment five years later. So 500 is our principal, our starting amount. We are increasing, so we're getting interest, so we're going to add. And then 9% annual interest turns into 0 0.09. But I have to be careful, I'm not just going to add 0 0.09. I need to put 0 0.09 
over 12, like that, because I'm compounding this interest monthly. And then I need to put that, let me scooch this up a little bit, I need to put that to the 12 times T. Now, I don't have to leave it T though, because they actually tell me how many years. So it would be 12 times 5, like that. So let's simplify some pieces. Let's first simplify this right here. So I'm going to put into my calculator 0 0.09 divided by 12. And I get 0 0.0075. So I'm going to instead write 1 plus 0 0.0075, like that. And then I can also simplify 12 times 5. 12 times 5 is 60. So if I put that into my calculator, we get 7, 8, 2.84. And does this make sense to have 0.84? It does because we're talking about money, so we can have 84 cents. Now you might be asking, why didn't I simplify what's in the parentheses? I totally could have. I can put that into my calculator and simplify that. Okay, one more example. Judy has $1,000 to invest at 9% annual interest compounded monthly. So there's the monthly again. Find the value of her investment after 30 years. So my principal is $1,000. Again, 9% compounded monthly. So 9% is 0 0.09. So I'm going to do 1 plus... 0 0.09 over 12. Where did the 12 come from? This right here, because of monthly. And then to the 12 times my time, how many years? Just 30 years. Now I hope you recognize this is actually the same exact percent interest in the same exact compound monthly situation. So this number here should be the exact same number that we got in example 5. So this is 1 plus 0 0.0075. And then 12 times 30 is going to be a bit bigger number. It's 360. So now we can put this into our calculator. And I get 14,730.58. Okie doke. So, when you guys start working on your assignment, what you're going to need to make sure and pay attention to is whether it says compound yearly monthly, daily, okay, actually I just looked, you might have been just confused, I just looked that your notes actually doesn't say in this one compounded monthly, it says compounded quarterly, because I was wondering about that, so your notes actually say quarterly. So let's talk about how this would change. Okay, it's not going to be terrible tweaks. If it's compound quarterly, how many times per year is that? That's four times per year. So this needs to be a four now. And then I need to figure out what 0 0.09 divided by four is. That's 0 0.0225. And change this. So 
I'm going to plug that in again. But this time I'm going to plug it in with 0 0.0225. Whoa! Did I, do, did I mess that up? No, I didn't. Oh, doy. Okay, something else needed to be fixed. This 12 right here needed to be fixed. That needs to be a 4. The reason why I thought, whoa, I messed this up is because I got a huge number. And that didn't make any sense. But this is what you do when you're working math. If you're working slowly enough, you find you figure out if you're making a mistake. This should be 120, not 360. So let me try that again. Okay. So what I get, I just need to tweak this number a little bit because it's still in the 14,000 range, but it's now. 441.02. So what that means is actually he would have gotten more money if he had it in an account that compounded every month. So the more you compound or the more you calculate interest, actually the more money you get. Okay, so I'm glad I caught that So because I'm sure you guys were like, what? Okay, so your assignment is the exponential growth and decay word problem worksheet. And so depending on where class is, you might have some time uh, to work on that now. But next class period, you should have some time to keep working on it. So hopefully this video got you what you needed. And should be good to go.